How you doing? Well, today we're going to take a look at something that I believe causes some controversy, and that is going to be a intraventricular conduction delay. This is something that most likely is a delay that is going to occur inside the ventricles. Because we are using a single lead, we are here in this rhythm interpreting it as a um, in lead two, we are not going to be able to identify with a single lead whether or not this is going to be a bundle branch block on the right or left side and we can't tell whether or not there's another type of conduction abnormality. To do those things, we would need a 12 lead EKG. And again, this is one of those things where I believe there's controversy because a lot of times people are saying, oh, well, if it goes this way, it's going to do this. You need an EKG. There are roles to follow to determine intravent, or I'm sorry, to determine bundle branch blocks. So when it's a single lead like this, we call it an intraventricular conduction delay. So let's dive in and take a look at this, and hopefully it'll make better sense to you as we explore it. So as with every EKG, we need to start off and identify whether or not it is readable. And as I look at the EKG here, it is definitely readable. So I give it a yes that I can read things. Then I want to take a look at their P waves. Are they present or absent? And again, I'm going to take a look and identify all my P waves. And I have P waves. So my P waves are present. Do I have a P wave for every QRS? Well, let's check that out. So here's a P wave and here's a QRS, P wave and a QRS. Now my next question will be, are there QRSs for every P? So I'm going to reverse it. And so my answer to these questions now becomes, there P wave for every QRS? My answer is yes. QRS for every P? My answer again is yes. Now I need to take a look at my PR interval. Is it consistent? And are things regular? So to do this, I'm going to pull in my calipers. And we're going to find a nice little P wave. That one looks pretty darn good. Look at my PR interval. So I'm now going to say, yep, that looks like my PR interval. Let's measure this sucker out and make sure that it is consistent. Again, I'm measuring all of these that I can. And it does appear to be regular. And it is consistent, or I'm sorry, it is consistent. And it looks like it's about four blocks. We're going to come back to that here in a second. And I want to make sure then that it is regular. Okay, so let me add in what I know already. I have a PR interval that is at 0.1, I'm sorry, yeah, 0.16, okay? Because I have four blocks. And we found out that that is normal. It is consistent. And now I need to see whether or not the atrial rate is, I'm sorry, if the atria is regular. And my atria are, in fact, regular. Okay, So my atria are regular. Now I'm going to take a look at what my rate is. Okay, So my atria are regular. And now I need to take a look at my rate. So my rate here, again, I have a, a P wave that is here. And here is where my next P wave is. So I am looking at something here is 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. I have 17 blocks. Okay. So I have 17 blocks that are between these two locations. So I am going to look at 1,500, put that inside the box, and I'm going to divide that by what? I said 17. And here we get a rate of 88. Okay. So again, if I were to do this, you know, real quick, it would be 300, it would be 300, 150, 100 here, 75. I got my exact rate here at 88. So my atrial rate is at 88. 
And since I already have my calipers positioned, I'm going to move them down here to my ventricular rate or my, yeah, my ventricles here. I'm going to look at my QRSs and I'm going to answer these questions while I'm available. And I'm moving these all around and I do note that in fact they are regular. So this means that I have a QRS that is regular. My ventricular rate also is at 88 because they were dead in line. Now I need to look at my QRS duration. So here's where I started, or here's where I left off with my PR. And I'm going to come into about right here. And when I move this, I notice that I am about four blocks, right? So I'm about four blocks in width. So my QRS duration is here greater than 0.12. Okay, so when I look at this, everything is normal with the exception of the QRS duration. Okay, so this is the abnormality. So I have to account for it, right? I have to be able to account for it. So I started off at the beginning of this trying to give you an idea as to what was going on. So let's go to my wonderful drawings. Yes, that was sarcasm. So we're going to split everything up. Electrical system that we have to take a look at. So we have our SA node that is up here. And then we have our internal pathways. So we have our conduction system. So let's start off. Here is our P wave. Right, so this is coming from the SA node. And we know that this is firing okay, it's at 60 to 100 times a minute. Okay, so this is why immediately we have to now call this sinus. Okay, then we measure our PR interval, and we'll just do it this way, right? So we're going to measure our PR interval. This is from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. This is our PR interval. It is measuring everything from all the way up here until we get all the way down here, right? So that is what this part here is measuring, okay? So it's measuring this part. It's determining how long it takes for that, SA, for that P wave to travel and it gets through the AV junction. Then it is going to go down through the Purkinje network going to come down into these these areas here right so it has to branch off and therefore this whole area in here or the ventricles is going to be represented here okay so what is happening is that this impulse is coming down and we're going to see that it is actually one side is going to be um, sending the impulses down as an all or nothing phenomenon. So let me erase some of this here so that um, we can look at this a little bit easier. Okay. So we're going to come back in here and we're going to just take a look at, um, oops, I want to draw the, the ventricles, right? So I got the ventricles that are here, okay? And I'm going to bring in my pathways, right? So I said that I had a pathway that is coming down through either side of this septum. So this is in the septum. And I'm going to come down. And what happens is one side is going to be an all or nothing. This goes all at one time. Okay. So this side, we're going to say for just these purposes, this is all together. And what that means is kind of like you're sitting inside of a hockey, stadium, a hockey arena or a football stadium. If somebody scores a touchdown or scores a goal, this means that they all jump up. Everybody jumps up at one time. So they've done it together. But during downtimes in these games people have a tendency to want to do different things such as doing the wave and it goes section by section by section and therefore 
that means that it takes a longer period of time for things to occur. So what happens on the other side is that you get cell to cell. So you get cell to cell conduction. And when we go cell to cell to cell like this, it takes longer for it to occur. And when it takes longer for it to occur, what happens is that we see this over time. We're seeing this over time on the EKG. So if you look up here, when we saw that we had an EKG, we had one side was going well, but as the other side was being discharged, it took a longer period of time for that to actually occur, and hence the reason why it took us this availability, or what we saw was the availability of the cells to conduct. So this is what is meant by an intra, I-N-T-R-A, intraventricular, we're saying it is inside the ventricles, so it's an intraventricular conduction delay. From this standpoint, we cannot determine that it is one bundle versus the other or there is some other problem. All we know is that inside the ventricles there is a problem. There's an intraventricular conduction delay. So as a result of that, we have to say that this is a sinus rhythm, right? So it's a sinus rhythm with an intra ventricular conduction delay, an IVCD. So it's sinus because of the P wave. We saw the P wave earlier. It's a sinus rhythm because it follows within the normal guidelines, right? So it's within the 60 to 100 for our SA node. And we have to add in the intraventricular conduction delay to account for a QRS duration that is greater than normal. It's greater than the 0.12, okay? Hopefully that helped you out, and we'll see you again real soon.